It's August 10th, 2014, and we want to know who signed up to bring Robot Man's pancreas for next week's Spiral Potluck? Is Batwing the reason my son is going to be riding in a booster seat until he's 37? All this and more is coming up next. It's episode 85 of DCR, starting now. We rescue a world from mysticism and tyranny, and usher in a future brighter than anything we can imagine. Up in the sky! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's the Stress Citizen Radio. Everybody and welcome back to another episode of the DCR, episode 85. I, of course, remain your host, Sean Lamont, bringing you the only podcast that promises not to become the fifth horseman of the apocalypse. Maybe the seventh, maybe the eighth, I don't know, but not the fifth. By God, we won't be the fifth. <laughs> uh, joining me this week, as he always does, my co-host in crime, the punmeister general, Mr. Brian Glein. Hello, sir. Hey, Sean. How's it going? I am splendid. How are things going in your neck of the woods? Um, boring. Boring? Yeah. Is that preferable to floods? And <laughs> It is preferable to floods and stuff, yes. <laughs> and we are also joined by your lovely wife, the bubbly effervescent sunshine lollipops and rainbows, Miss Kelly. Hello, Kelly. How are you? Sort of rested. <laughs> sort of rested? You're, the only reason we're recording this tonight is because you needed sleep. Yes. So you better be damn well rested. <laughs> I am more rested than I would have been if you had recorded this yesterday. Fair enough. Uh, so what we're we gonna- are recording this on Sunday, correct? Yeah, of course. I mean, it's always Sunday, August tenth, two thousand fourteen. What we are going to do though is go over all of the books that came out from DC Comics in their new Fifty Two line. Go over some of the plot beats, storylines, character developments. By the end of the show, you guys should have a good idea of what happened in DC Comics this week. So, if you do not want your book spoiled, you may not want to listen to this episode. We also have a fourth micer, it seems, as well. So, hopefully that is a temporary thing and will not cause any issues. So, moving on. Questions, comments, concerns, corrections, etc. It's just going to be one of those days. Uh, first one, it's more of a comment than a question, and it's it's pretty up to date. Brian, it's aimed directly at you. Yes. Lewis Duffield wrote in and says, So, I have been listening to the most recent episode and enjoyed Brian's potential roller derby team. Here's a few you might want to join your team. And he gave us a list of some more that meet your criteria, Brian. Uh, the first one is John Stabmost. Oh, nice. Uh, Dave Killier. <laughs> <laughs> Mary Tyler Floor, Bloody Holly, and Corey Payne. So. I, I can, I can roll with all those. Uh, pun intended. Mm-hmm. But, um, are you, are you just gonna actually put together a full team here? <laughs> I, I just might. <laughs> By the end of this show, you should have your own roller derby team all named and ready to go. Mm-hmm. So I, I fully expect you to have a roller derby team, I don't know, maybe by five years from now, before okay. Brother I takes over. Gotcha, gotcha, I, gotcha. I expect that much at least. Uh, we did get a question, though. Steven Schwendeman also wrote in and said, My girlfriend just got me the trade for Green Lantern Volume 1 of the New 52. I was wondering if I'm missing something with Hal losing his ring and Sinestro coming back to the Green Lanterns after creating his core. Yes. Yes, you did miss some stuff. You're missing only, what, five years worth of material that came before? <laughs> You're missing about 80%, I would say, 80 to 85% of the actual John's run of Green Lantern. Weep womp. <laughs> yes, it started in, what, 2006? It was right around Infinite Crisis was when Green Lantern Rebirth was, right? I believe so. I could be wrong, but just look for Rebirth. Yeah. Google it. Use, it. use internet. Come on. And there's a lot of books that follow after mm-hmm. that. <laughs> well. If you're waiting for birthdays to read it, you will be fairly old by the time you are done. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I did also have one little quick comment. We normally don't do this, but I did want to say happy birthday to Levi. Uh, they have been listening since like episode seven, so I did at least want to say happy birthday because <laughs> yeah. if you've put up with us for that long, mm-hmm. <laughs> you deserve it. Yep. Uh, that's all we're going to do, though, for questions and comments for this week. I'm... Gosh, episode seven. I know. I know. That was rough. <laughs> rough. Yep. Uh, so let's move forward into this week's books. All 
right, now leading us off. It is a month of endings, it seems. Yes, as we were about to spoil everything in the New 52. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm talking more of like all of the I know, we just forgot are... to say that, so. No, I said that. Oh, you did? I, I already went through it. Okay. We only had like a four and a half minute intro. How did you miss it? <laughs> the baby. Oh, yeah, that. <laughs> I remember now. <laughs> uh, so, I am starting us off with Earth 2 number 26, the end of their big storyline their epic storyline that is tossed around quite a bit that word but this one i think kind of fits the mold because brian you remember what all's been happening in here oh um, kent is dead evil superman just killed him uh earth yeah. 2 is being sucked into a boom tube to become the new apocalypse um there's a whole horde of parademons running rampant explosions explosions everywhere it's like a michael bay film gone bad mm-hmm. or good I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Exactly. It's like a Michael Bay film. <laughs> uh, so what we have right now is all of the wonders of Earth 2 have gone out there and they're trying to figure out how they can stop this. And they figured the best course of action they can take is to take out the w- boom tube generator that is on Earth. The one that both Mr. Terrific and Mr. Horrific and those guys put together. <laughs> yeah. So... They are about to go charging in, but it turns out evil Superman is not very good at his job. He had one role. He was just supposed to open up this boom tube, make sure this Earth 2 got pushed through it, and instead he's basically getting into arguments with everyone along the way. He's fighting against Valzad, and he's going, Ha-ha, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to murder you because I'm evil and gritty and grr. And Valzad just basically takes him to task uh tells him yeah i get it man you're gritty your 90s as hell cool man i, I dig the chains really awesome mm-hmm. <laughs> the 13 year olds love you there man mm-hmm. way to go evil superman and he's just not gonna fight him and evil superman's going well then why are you even here oh i'm just supposed to keep you away from the generator thing so uh the other guys can turn it off very good tactician valzad though evil superman takes off and goes flying over there and they have to go chasing after him because at the generator The Wonders are trying to figure out what they can do. There's a god inside, Bedlam, one of their the hunger dogs that's in there that can uh, control people's minds. And they're going, well, how are we going to take down a god? I mean, I'm Batman and all. That's kind of cool. But I'm not really good at taking down gods. I don't have my gun that shoots through time that I can run around and do stuff with. Batman didn't fire the gun through time. I know. I'm just... (laughs) Well, isn't there that that god killing gun thing? Yeah, the the mortal killer, uh, over in Pandora. Yeah, I guess you could go swing by there and pick it up. Her whole thing's coming to a close. So yeah, should be she's not using too. it. <laughs> uh, so they're going. How are we gonna do it? And Aqua Woman steps forward and goes, "I can take care of it. Can you just get me in there? Who can get me past the horde of parademons here?" Flash goes, "Well, I can run you in there, but..." If I tried to do it with all these hordes of demons, parademons around, you'll probably get injured along the way. And they go, okay, wonders, make a hole. And everyone goes charging in, big old epic fight as they're trying to open up enough space for the Flash to get through with Aquawoman. Superman and Valzad crash right into the middle of this fight that's going on. And Superman throws a punch so hard that the blowback from the punch literally knocks both opposing armies away from each other and that's when flash goes okay i guess that's my hole and goes <laughs> pew and runs right on in aquaman faces down against uh this guy by the name of bedlam bedlam just kind of punches her out of the roof and she lands on the ground and she's just got this big old crap eating grin on her face the entire time and Bed- or, yeah, Bedlam comes out and he's like, oh, you're super powerful. This is going to be awesome. You guys are going to join my team for Darkseid as well. And all of a sudden, Bedlam just falls over dead. Everyone's like, um, what just happened? <laughs> and uh, she explains, oh, yeah, I just moved the water around in his body and forced it all up into his brain. I gave a god a stroke. You know, that's what I do. So uh, what are we doing next, guys? And everyone's just staring at Aqua and like, god damn Aqua. <laughs> That's why you were in prison. Yes. Uh, she's a little potent. So far, she's already moved the entire ocean to take out a battalion of these parademons. Just dropped one of the new gods by just moving the water around in his brain. Mm-hmm. That's that's a little frightening. A smidge. Just a skosh. As soon as that happens, Mr. Terrific and Mr. Horrific are able to break control of the mind control Bedlam had them under. And they turn off the boom tube. Yay, Earth 2 is saved. Woo! 
And as soon as the link is severed between Earth 2 and Apocalypse, evil Superman starts turning to ash. He's like turning to stone and it's cracking and Valzad's like, whoa, man, I had nothing to do with this. I'm a pacifist. What the heck is going on with Superman? And that's when Lois Lane Red Tornado comes down and goes, oh, that's not Superman. That's uh, that's something else. And as he's slowly wasting away, did you read this one, Brian? Yes, I did. Okay, as he's slowly wasting away, the S on the chain, his crest that he has, flips over in the wind as it's blowing, and it, it's a reversed S crest, and he's like, me am Superman, Lois Lane. Me am Superman. Me no bizarro, me Superman. <laughs> the chains were a bizarro chain that was so flippin' brilliant. Yes, it's not even it funny. was so obvious that yep. we didn't put one and one together. Exactly. This, though, so he, played. So is, he was finally unchained? Kind of. He crumbles to ash and... He turned into a bizarro and crumbled to ash. <laughs> It, so he's unchained. He, yeah. Well, yeah, there's no chains left. Yeah. You so, can't chain down Ash. <laughs> so chain watch. Chain watch is over? No, we got another month for chain watch. Yes. Another month to go. The The whole thing is, is that technically gives us two stories. The Earth 2 Bizarro that we saw the origin story and the Villains Month Dark Side, where Dark Side had gone around through the multiverse and was collecting Superman and, and put together his patchwork Bizarro, mm-hmm. sent it to Earth 2. And then we have the uh, Lex Luthor Bizarro father-son weird relationship over there. Yeah. So I kind of like the, the Lex Luthor one still, but this one was just a nice turn and twist that was so blatantly obvious that we are stupid for not seeing. <laughs> yes. So kudos to those guys. Uh, the entire thing ends, though, with everyone standing around going, well, I think we have a little bit of cleanup to do with the giant gash in the side of the Oh, planet. Huntress, Power Girl, nice of you to show <laughs> up now. Huh. They're just going to roll up and be like, hey, guys, we miss anything? <laughs> Can we help? They're like, yeah, carry the trash out. Thanks. <laughs> Bedlam yeah. did escape, though, in the in the whole fight there at the end. And uh, took Mr. Terrific and Mr. Horrific and Mr. Miracle and Big Barda, it looked like, and Fury. So he still has some people under his mind control that look to be causing some troubles coming down the pike. So their worries are not over. But it ends with the whole, hey, we're all a big team now. What should we call ourselves? I don't know. Maybe next month we'll figure it out. <laughs> the end. <laughs> I, I like this one a lot, that ending pulled a lot of it up. It, this was a pretty long stretch of books yeah, for it's a storyline, though. It's been going quite a bit. Twelve issues, I want to say. Hmm. So it's it's going to be two volumes for this Superman war that was going on. And it, it obviously was getting Earth 2 into a place it needed to be as well for the overarching storyline that's going to be going on in the DCU. Yeah. So it probably will be pretty essential reading, do you think? Moving forward, it's possible, and it sounds like when Taylor took over, it really kicked up a notch. So. Yeah, he's he's actually stepping back to just co-write because of the whole World's End stuff. He's going to be uh, plotting that as well. Okay. So I believe it was not Marguerite Bennett. Who else was there? Someone it's else. So, is someone be, who's like a novelist, wasn't it? Yeah, like someone else wrote Robo Apocalypse. Yeah, someone else is stepping in to to help him co-plot and actually do the writing and the dialogue. So. We'll find out how that plays out after the September month, because as I said, this is a month of endings. Almost all of these have huge cliffhangers or the end of storyline so that you don't have to wait through next month's event. Yes. Uh, speaking of events, though, Brian. All right. I think uh, I feel a little doomy. <clears throat> ah, I, feel, I feel it. <laughs> Everyone get used to me talking for the next 20 minutes or so. <laughs> yes. Yes. Brian is covering all of our doomed books. So. Yep. Do it to it, Brian. All right, starting off with Superman Wonder Woman Annual Number 1, Superman Doomed Bracket Super Doom colon Chapter 3. Super He's Doom? Super Doom. <laughs> <laughs> He's Super Doom, eh? Um, okay, Superman has um, accidentally snorted some Doomsday. He's turning into Doomsday, and he's all floating around space trying not to destroy the Earth with his Doomsday mist. Was he chopping up Doomsday with a little... Razor blade on a mirror. Mm-hmm. Was he like, yeah, get those lines of doomsday. <laughs> mm-hmm, yep. So um, because it's got, you know, Reign of the Superman illusions going on all over the place, uh, he's in space fighting Cyborg Superman, rips off his arm, oh! and then just sort of 
leaves Cyborg Superman floating off in space to go to go fight on Earth. Super Doom for being the most efficient killing machine in all of the universe. Really inefficient when it comes to killing people. Yeah. He just kind of leaves people half dead all over the place. Mm-hmm. Um, we get a global view of the superheroes fighting. Brainiac has unleashed a bunch of, uh, squid walrus ships on Earth. Yes. Not really so squid walrus anymore, just kind of squiddy. Yeah, more yeah. squiddy than walrus now. Yeah, unfortunately. Maybe it's just an angle thing. Maybe, maybe. But we get to see a big global view of all the superheroes fighting Brainiac ships on Earth. Uh, Zillia Zox. We get to see Zillia Zox again. I know. It was a sad <laughs> at some At some point, week. at some points, he's got his mysterious third leg back. Yes, yes. <laughs> which just sort of came and went in between, uh, creative teams. Um, Steel and Lana Lang, they are off in space in a spaceship dealing with Cyborg Superman. Hey, uh, what does Lana Lang do? Well, she is an electrical engineer. Is she? Mm-hmm. I, I feel like I was reminded again this week of this small factoid. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. So, um, Steel goes... She damn well be, be the best electrical engineer that has ever graced the planet. <laughs> it's possible. It's possible. So, they go to break uh, Cyborg Superman's giant teleportation gate. Uh, he busts... Um, Cyborg Superman busts the hull of their ship... And uh, Steel saves Lana by doing what else? What does Steel do in a pinch? He covers her with liquid metal. <laughs> it was his book, if you yeah. remember. Mm-hmm. The uh, the John Henry Irons, How to Solve All Your Problems by Covering It with Metal. Yep. We did talk about it before. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, super, so Super Doom, he goes back to Earth, and Doom's do- Day enjoys the fact that the... Crip- <laughs> I'm sorry, the, the doomsday sound effects from the baby in the background is really driving us insane. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Just sitting there going, ah, ah. <laughs> So Super Doom, he goes back to Earth. Uh, doomsday, the doomsday part of Superman is enjoying the kryptonite mist that is letting uh, doomsday take over, be in control of everything. I'm sorry, but that scene where it was... Uh, the vision of Clark Kent and the vision of Super Doom up in his brain. And it's like, yeah, you should go back to Earth and take care of that. Oh, that's a great idea. I'm with you 100%. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's like, I could probably, I'm really fast. I could get down there, save some people, get out from the kryptonite before you take over. Yep, agree with you 100% yep. there, Clark Kent. You should do that. <laughs> yes. I don't know what the what to call it, but that but jer- jerky, obvious evil doomsday is kind of hilarious. Isn't it really it? is. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, Wonder Woman shows up and uh, throws off her gauntlets and uh, kind of goes Tron mode. Not quite the same. It's her god it's, mode. It's more like a like, it's more like a Kirby dot mode than a Tron mode. Uh, but you know, Kirby dot mode is god mode in, well, in yes. the DCU. I know, I know. Luckily, Batman pulls all the kryptonite out of the atmosphere just in time for Superman to stop Doomsday from destroying another town. Superman's back! He helps everyone clear out the Brainiac ships. Cyborg Superman is pleased that they stood up to the task. And then he opens his portal and unleashes the Skyworm from the Avengers movie on everybody. <laughs> I Wait. think this one's even bigger, though. Yeah, it's, it's, as, it's as big as a planet. Yes, it's a planet-sized uh, Brainiac Worm, I, I guess. guess. Huh? <laughs> Or is it Mr. Mine? Oh, if only, if only. <laughs> uh, moving on to Action Comics Annual Number Three: Superman. The same story, but from a different angle. Yep, Superman Doomed Bracket Super Doom Bracket Colon Chapter Four. <laughs> we are dealing in this story. We are dealing with Lois Lane as the new Brainiac conduit on Earth. I wonder if it's eventually just going to be Action Comics punctuation. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Anamanapia will show up. Um, one of the cool things about this issue is all of the lowest trapped in Brainiac's brain sequences are drawn by Aaron Cooter, and they're super expressive and amazing. Yes. Lois Lane trying to pull herself out of the Brainiac cage she's in is hilarious. I don't know if hilarious is the word I would use. Well, it amused me, if anything. Yes. Superman teams back up with Baka, who still believes in him. And they go to help Lois. Oh, Baca's back. I know. Baca's back. <laughs> yeah. So. And it's all this really awesome scene where it's like, Baca, no, leave Superman. Yeah. Even though you're putting out death spores that are eating away my flesh. <laughs> <laughs> I still believe in you. Uh, they go to help Lois. Superman is able to use his doomsday mists 
to destroy all of the nanobots controlling Lois and is what's making her brainiac. Batman, Lex Luthor, Harrow, Zaydu the Phantom Ki- King, and Dr. Shea Veritas <laughs> work together to pull all the kryptonite out of the atmosphere using a hundred trillion tiny portals that Dr. Veritas just had laying around. <laughs> She In the most Dr. Veritas solution <laughs> to the kryptonite mist problem humanly possible. She quite literally opens up a portal to suck through every molecule of kryptonite. And on each Earth. molecule gets its own portal. I am not I am not exaggerating when I say a hundred trillion tiny portals. So, like, where did she store all those? In the center of the Earth? Of Come course. on. The center of the Earth is like massive. Mm-hmm. You can oh. you can store probably two trillion. Tiny yeah. portals, molecular size oh. portals. I guess. <laughs> well, where is you it? You can kind of store them anywhere. Probably in a box. Yeah. <laughs> just put a portal inside, portal inside, portal. It just all works out. You so where do those up. portals go to? You know what? We don't really know. No, we don't. I wonder if there's like some poor planet. Earth fifty two is just all the all the kryptonite bulbs in Earth fifty two are just going out as we speak. <laughs> Is Our it? poor lamp planet is just being destroyed. <laughs> it was as if a million light bulbs all went out at once. <laughs> uh, so all the kryptonite mist being gone makes crypto okay, but also Zaydu, the Phantom King, who is Kryptonian, and he manages to escape. Uh, so Superman's back. He helps everyone clear out the Brainiac ships. Cyborg Superman is pleased that they stood up to the task. Then he opens up his portal and unleashes a Skyworm from the Avengers movie on the planet. <laughs> Wait a second one? <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to Action Comics number 34. Before su- we move on, though, okay. I'm sorry. Uh, the one thing that stood out to me was that this kind of put some clarity on Harrow and the Ghost Soldier and stuff like that. It's not that they are soldiers that can turn intangible. They're actual ghosts that can yeah. turn tangible to manipulate the world around them. I thought it was the other way. I thought it was like, oh, we're a bunch of soldiers and we got the technology to turn intangible and go through things. Yeah, you I know? thought that's what I thought's what like our ghost soldier, the main ghost soldier. I thought that it was his deal, but Harrow can also raise other people. No, no, it okay. turns out that they're all ghosts. There's just so much going on in this issue and I was he's, trying to condense he's it. He's like a, a Navajo warrior. Okay. That's the whole big thing was that he's he's a ghost as well. So Yay, ghosts. ghosts. He might have ghosts on his side. Yeah, yeah. All right, so moving on to Action Comics number 34, Superman Doomed, bracket, last son, bracket, colon, chapter one. Oh, moving on. Wow. Uh, Not to beat my drum that I always do, but Aaron Cooter and Scott Collins drew this issue, and it really stood out as being the superior of the three I read this week. It feels like this... Compliment was just given 30 seconds ago. It almost was. Well, he only did like a few panels in the last one. I'm just one. saying. Yeah, I know. I know. So uh, did he friend you on Twitter? Are you guys just bosom buddies now? No, no I don't are use you, Twitter. I have you, a Twitter account. Like, I don't use it. Are you just starting up your www.aarincooteristhebesterist.com? <laughs> .edu? <laughs> he does send me a nice check every month. but <laughs> Does he? No. <laughs> All right, so uh, everyone's still in comas in Smallville and Metropolis. This is a thing that happened before and hasn't been touched on for several issues, yes. but still going on. The giant skyworm from the Avengers movie takes out the city of Gotham as well. Is that and- just what you're going to call it for the rest of this? <laughs> I may as well. Okay. <laughs> Um, it is Brainiac, just FYI, yes. mm-hmm. people. It is not the giant skyworm from Avengers. Yes. It is Brainiac. <laughs> yes. um, it takes out the city of Gotham and then the entire planet, inclu- including Zillia Zox. Hey, you're still alive, buddy. Yeah. You're kicking. Hey, maybe he survived. Maybe. Maybe he just rolled on out of the wreckage and he was mm-hmm. A-OK. Like I said, he was He's just, his he... own airbag. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Um, Keep hanging on to that. Mm-hmm. Keep hanging on. So action star Lana Lang, uh, Jeff Goldblum's up and uh, realizes that uh, Brainiac is networking the entire planet's brains for, ah, uh, yes, yes, processing power to turn the planet into a giant weapon. Are you sure? She said it was happening, <laughs> so it must be happening. Does he have a little satellite that he can just attach to the roof of his car to pinpoint where someone is based off of their cell phone inside the White House? Maybe. I know she is working on a Windows 95 virus for this complicated space worm. So. Oh, okay. Well, then I I don't think we have anything to worry yeah, about. Yeah, I yeah. think everything's in order. Mm-hmm. Uh, is the president going to give a speech, though? <laughs> Today is their no. Independence Day. No, no. 
So uh, how can they stop this giant weapon that he's making? Uh, Lex Luthor and Batman are speechless, but Superman, Superman has an idea. Guys, guys, sit down for this. We're going to push it through a portal. <laughs> <laughs> so, Solution to everything. everyone's like, okay, Superman, <laughs> you're Superman. I just want to see the Superman playbook with its one page in it. It's just, or two pages. Throw in the sun. If sun not available, push through portal. Yep. <laughs> but what if a portal's not available or the sun isn't available? Then, then what we is are it? S-O-L. Call up Shea Veritas and have her use a trillion tiny portals to bring a trillion <laughs> tiny suns to you so you can throw them at him. That's the best of both worlds, mm-hmm. honestly. Yep. So uh, Harrow sends Ghost Soldier and a ghost army to go distract Brainiac, while Superman uh, solar powers up to uh, I-beam power the uh, Phantom Zone portal. It's going to work. And then the Skyworm assimilates the ghost army. It's go- The giant worm is going to crash into the planet and kill everyone. Superman and Martian Manhunter are able to push it away. Lois tells him to go take out Brainiac. Everything is fine on Earth. Superman, go deal with Brainiac. Take him out. Everything is fine here. And sure enough, as soon as she says that, (laughs) Mongol and Nan come stepping out of the Phantom Zone portal with the explicit plan to murder the planet. To Hopefully murder have, the planet, huh? Murder the planet. Uh, are they going to turn into a war world? The, hey, what war else is Mongol going to do? War, war, war world. He's going to turn into a war world. <laughs> that's what Mongol does. But am I the only one that's getting this as a... This event is basically, let's get all of his iconic battles of Superman into this event so they're just done. They're in the books. Now he can meet all of his big iconic enemies and... He'll be like, okay, I have a rapport with you. We fought a giant space worm from the Avengers that one time, remember? Mm-hmm. It was awesome, guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but this one, uh, how did how did it work for you? How did these three issues do? Because I know you were, you were lagging a little bit when it came to the Doomed storyline. There is so much happening. And I'm yes. normally not a person to complain about that. But there is so much stuff happening. Well, yeah, it's all yeah. this. They're basically, it's all the payoff from Labdell's stuff and... Uh, the Batman Superman. Yes. So this is basically just taking all the stuff that's been going on in the super titles and just going, nah. <laughs> yeah. It's a great big crescendo. It's a lot of great payoffs if you've been reading everything. Yes. Um, it, it, it's, it's hard to process it all when you're reading like seven other books that, that week. Though. Well, that's fair enough. But three of those were the Superman books. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, for me, it, it won me back. Yeah. Just because the, it was just kind of a pacing thing in the last two issues where it was just kind of keeping pace in the same place, just kind of running in place. And these ones just kind of went, okay, the gun went off and pew, they just took off. And as you said, stuff was happening a mile a minute, just all over the place. I yeah. Enjoyed it. So jerk face doomsday and, uh, all of our action comics pals coming back sort of, you know, pulled me back a little bit. And Zilius. And Zil- well, of course. Did Zilius at least get you to be well, like, Well, oh. it ma- made me smile. Okay. Yeah. You got to see the outsiders for a little bit. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to space again then because I'm okay. going to go to Green Lantern. Are there space worms? There are no space worms. Hmm. I'm sorry. Okay. I'll, I'll insert some space worms Sounds for you. Sounds good. Sounds okay. good. Uh, Green Lantern number 34 by Venditti, Billy Tan, and Rob Hunter. Uh, it's kind of the aftermath of everything that was going on with Uprising. Kind of. Yeah, actually, this is more of a bridge issue. They didn't want to start anything before the September month, it seems. Yeah. So this is our bridge issue over to it. Hal Jordan is off chasing this empath or empath that eats emotional sandwiches. And oh, this we're back guy, to the emotional sandwiches. Kind of. This guy seems to gain power by eating other people's emotions. Uh, his name is Aga Rushna Wakliag. Or oh. Aga? Aga? I don't know. But it's it's they keep even Hal Jordan can't pronounce no, it. Which I realize it is Hal Jordan. Yeah, but so whatever. Uh he ends up getting into a fight with this guy, he knocks him out, hauls him back to Mogo, and as he is putting him in one of the science cells, this Aga character starts eating all of the willpower that Mogo is putting out. And they're like, Mogo, can you stop being so willful? And he's like, I'm a planet just to keep gravity and us spinning and you guys from not flying off in an atmosphere i gotta exert a little bit of willpower here 
If you want me to stop that, though, I can. It's up to you. You're Hal Jordan. You're a good leader. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And uh, so they end up fighting this guy, fighting him. And that is when Hal Jordan's niece and nephew come running out from one of the buildings. And they're like, Uncle Hal, Uncle, oh, my goodness. (laughs) And they are terrified of this horrible monster that's attacking their their Uncle Hal. And, uh, of course, this Aga character being an empath senses the fear, becomes afraid himself, and just all of a sudden loses all of his powers. They use that time to knock him out, throw him into a science cell, and whoop, whoop, whoop. Job well done by Hal Jordan. His nephew. (laughs) And his nephew. (laughs) And the rest of this issue is essentially, uh, what it is is that Kilowog felt bad that Hal Jordan sent everyone off for some R&R after the whole uprising war. Hal Jordan, of course, was stuck behind he wasn't allowed to go back to earth because of the whole red lanterns deal that he made not allowed to go there so kilowog made a call to simon baz simon baz talked to guy gardner and said hey buddy can i get like a visa pass just to go out and come back afterwards and guy said yeah sure and so what he did was he had simon baz bring some of his family members his younger brother uh the younger brother's wife and their two kids out to visit hal jordan and it's very very cute it's kilowog giving piggyback rides to the kids and they're off talking to saint walker and mogo and the even the mom is just kind of like this is just mind-boggling i can't accept this until all the kids are just having fun playing with the planet i (laughs) guess it's a very fun thing and the rest of the issue is hal talking to his brother basically coming to the realization that maybe he's not the best leader of the Green Lanterns ever. No. Maybe there could be someone else out there that could be better at it. Hmm. (laughs) But his brother smacks him around and says, come on, buddy, you're out here doing all this stuff. If anyone's going to do it from our family, we knew it was going to be you. So just be you, man. Get out there, seize the day. You always do the right thing. Just remember what you're fighting for. Me, my wife, your nieces and nephews. As long as you're doing your best off of that, you're A-OK, buddy. There's nothing that could possibly go wrong. Right. As we jumped out to deep space where everything has possibly gone wrong, as a boom tube opens up and out steps the High Father, the uh, good guy, new god. Yes. <laughs> I, I he's must... Dark Side's opposite number, if anything. Yeah, he is Order. And order Mm -hmm. isn't necessarily good, but he is order. That is what he brings. And he steps out, and he's like, those God's damn prime material plane people went and messed around with the source wall, didn't they? Ah, I hate these people. Okay, let's get out there. Let's find them all. Wrangle up these Green Lantern people. I know one of them did it. They all look the same to me. I don't know which one it was. So wrangle them all up, because if one of them got in there, this could be my chance to finally claim... The life equation, which is what? Right. (laughs) Well, Darkseid kills everyone with the anti, or he's always searching for the anti-life equation, which is the thing that will destroy everything. So Kyle Rayner, when he went in there and monkeyed around with the source wall, he may have discovered the life equation. That would explain how he resurrected a planet. Yeah. Okay, I'm starting to follow this here. So this is technically Kyle Rayner's fault that now it is going to be Lanterns versus New Gods, it seems, coming uh, up. Why did I give up those two books again? Yeah! <laughs> oh, come on. It's not going to be that bad. They're okay. actually, it looks like they're doing it very similar to The Doomed, where it is, there is a, uh, the name of the crossover is going to be called Godhead. And it looks like it's only in New Guardians and... Green Lantern, at least from the okay. first month. I don't know if it's going to spread out from there, but it, it seems like that's what they're doing with the Lantern books now, where, it, like, the last one was Core two that I and Green Lantern. <laughs> yep, yep, yeah. yep. Sucks to be you, bro. Yep, Zillia sucks, dies, and Orion's going to be showing up in the other books. All right. Yep, yep, yep. So I am looking forward to that one. That is the big... Not like I don't have access to the other ones. I but. know. Yeah, that's starting in October, so that's going to be a lot of fun for at least us. I don't know about everyone else, yeah. but we'll enjoy it quite a bit. Uh, I am continuing on, though, because you went on for three books. My next book and last one for this half is Aquaman and the Others, number five. Aquaman's bleeding out. He's dying. He got stabbed by that Mr. Roboto called Legend, the guy that was the son of the alchemist that was... Will Smith. 
Yes, the son of the alchemist mm. that the uh, King Atlan stole all the gold from back in the day that forged his trident and all the artifacts that the others used. Blah, 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 blah. So this legend guy wants to get all the artifacts so he can reforge a new set of armor because his current one's kind of old steampunky style and it's going to fall apart. And once he does that, he's going to be immortal. Woo! Go immortality. So he's collecting all of the artifacts. He has most of the others hostage already. And he just kind of plunks them down into this pool. And he's like, well, only need two more. Hopefully they show up to rescue their buddies here. Because once they do, I can plunk them in and reforge my armor. And that's where we see where the other two are. On the moon, Brian. It's uh, Yawara, the jungle girl, as you call her. Mm -hmm. So you can keep them straight. And Vostok, or kind of Vostok. We're not quite sure. Uh, we know he died before in Aquaman, but as soon as Yawara got up there with his helmet, all of a sudden the tube opened up and out stepped Vostok. Clone, maybe? We don't know. But he's completely feral, and he's just <laughs> lashing out at Yawara, and she's like, oh, crap, and smacking him around with his own helmet <laughs> until she goes, maybe, and she bloop, plunks the uh, helmet on top of his head, and all of a sudden, poof. He's back to being sentient. He's back again. He's like, oh, you are. Hey, long time no see. How you been? Uh, why are you bleeding? What's going on here? <laughs> what are you doing on the moon? Are there jungles on the moon now? That's kind of cool. We can visit now. <laughs> She's like, no time to explain. Arthur and the others are in trouble. We got to get down there and help them out. So they hop on down, start fighting the good fight. Everyone's punching each other. And while that's going on, the sister of the uh, the seer, Kahina's sister, goes, oh, I know what to do to save Aquaman, and just kind of plunks him down into the pool, the pool of water where all the artifacts are. Just sploosh, and of course he pops up a little bit later with all the artifacts going, yay, I'm fully healed now, everything's A-OK. Stabby, stab, 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 legend goes down. The others are victorious. And everyone's kind of taking this moment to look over and go, Hey, uh, Vostok, aren't you dead? Could have sworn you were dead. Um, and see you standing there, but I'm pretty sure you're dead. And this Vostok's like, no, I'm, I'm good. And Yuar is telling them all what happened. Well, I went to the moon, I had the helmet, all of a sudden this pod opened up and he stepped out and operative is standing there going, well, he's probably a clone then or some sort of like genetic experiment maybe. And Vostok's standing there going, uh, no, Vostok is Vostok. Vostok is not clone. Other Vostok was clone. I am Vostok. <laughs> They're like, okay, whatever, Vostok. And this is when we have the most awkward scene of the week, to be completely frank. It is the most weird scene why this would happen. They go to the ghost world where the ghost of Kahina says, oh, hey, sister, how you doing? You get to keep the seal of clarity so you don't go crazy talking about spider robots and stuff like that. So, yay, you get to join the others. And uh, Ghost of Vostok is standing there. And all of the others are like, hey, Ghost of Vostok, buddy, long time no see. How you been? While new Vostok is standing there looking very, very angry. And they're like, man, we're so happy to have a Vostok back, but we wish it was you, Ghost Vostok. <laughs> and he's you just see his eyebrows furrowing during this entire conversation. They're like, yep, yep, original Vostok was always the best Vostok. <laughs> Vostok Classic is so much better than new Vostok. It's just so uncomfortable, the whole scene. Because it's done in one of those panels where it's like really a close-up of the new Vostok's face and you're looking over his shoulder behind him. So you just see like his eyes furrowing <laughs> as the conversation continues. And it just has to suck for him. It mm -hmm. really does. Uh, but it ends with everyone going, yay, we won. The others are awesome. Hey, operative, do you have another giant living room plane we can use as a base again? I don't know. I'll make some calls. So that's where we're going from there. I kind of right. like the characters still. It, was, it wasn't it was the strongest opening arc. I will say that much. But I really like the characters, and I'm hoping that we'll be able to carry it far enough to get a, a plot line going here. Because this one seemed – it was a great introductory arc, but as far as a – building the mythos and, and stuff oh my like gosh that. this is amazing you've got to read it yeah, yeah it was it was it fell a little short of that by actually more than a little but it, it was still as i said the characters are good mm -hmm. there's something there it's nice to see new characters period these days exactly so so uh what are you wrapping us up with this hat uh, the new 52 futures end number 14 Ooh. all right so continuing on five years in the future five years in the future 
I'm sorry, we're Jack. starting off with <laughs> we're starting off with Emiko and Big Barda, who have teamed up, and they are about to take on Deathstroke and Fifty Sue. Uh, 50 Sue fighting is hilarious because she just sort of like hops onto you and just starts pummeling you into the face as fast as humanly with possible. With her tiny little with fist. With tiny little fist. <laughs> whenever, you hear, whenever you say her name, I think you're saying 52. I'm yes, like, that's, that's the joke. Oh, okay. Yes, her name is 50 Sue, though. So as they're fighting, uh, Emiko stabs Deathstroke in the neck with an arrow and sets 50 Sue on fire. Emiko, Emiko. It's nice to see her back. It's nice to see her back. It's nice to see Deathstroke get taken down a peg. <laughs> that was more your big thing, huh? You were this is, like, a, dude yeah, who, this is a dude who, who once took down the entire Justice League in one page. So it's nice to see it maybe be a little more realistic. Really? One so, page? Yeah. Man. Yep. Was it at least a lot of, oh, he did this, and then like a couple hours later he did this? Or was it just like a, no. he did one round like they, they, kick they, and they, just they, like, dump, they, dump, 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 Yeah, they ran, they ran into him in, the, they ran into him in, an, in a street somewhere. Uh, Flash was just like, hey, I've got super speed. I'm going to get hit by you anyway. Okay. You know. <laughs> just cause. Yeah. I want to see what it's like to get punched by Deathstroke. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Everyone says it's really interesting. I've got to experience this. Oh, I picked the wrong time to do it. Try new things. <laughs> yeah. Um, Red Robin, Tim Drake, who, as we all know, has been living under the name Crispin Von Swithens, uh, gives Madison Payne her necklace back. The police got it for you. Not the actual police, but Sting. Yeah, Sting got it back for you. That's the ticket. Not me. Not at all. Not, not Crispin Von Swithens. The police. Because every kiss begins with street vigilantism. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, Batman Beyond. Uh, Plastique, who just inca- incapacitated Terry McGinnis, uh, also doesn't want Coil to kill him, or she th- she threatens to blow up their entire hideout. Oh, well, that's one way to do it. <laughs> yeah, we've all got to work together. She's got like, um, oh, God, what was his name? I can't remember. There was a guy who, like, he get, everything he touched would turn into a bomb. Okay. And one time in DC 1 million, the 1 million version of him accidentally turned his butt into a hand grenade. No, I... Yes. <laughs> so it was kind of like Gambit? Like kind of like Gambit, yeah. She, she, yeah, she's almost, yeah she's, she's almost got, like, Gambit powers. Okay. Yeah, like, she, she like, threw, like, a paper airplane at Batman Beyond and blew him up before, so... So she's going to force... Because he's, he's the only person that's been in terrific, te- in terrific tech before, so he's the person that has to help them get in there so they can steal a U-sphere before it finally comes out, so... <laughs> Being on the cutting edge of technology is very hard. <laughs> yes. Check in with Grifter. He's back on Cadmus Island with uh, another 50 Sue. Yes. Because she, right. she another one? She projected... Oh, yes. Uh, last week, she uh, projected herself to be in two different places at once. So one of them is uh, crawling around air ducts with Grifter on Cadmus Island, and the other one is uh, getting set on fire by Emiko <laughs> in uh, Montreal. So, really, both of them are doing great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh. Yeah, so... um. They drop in on some Earth-2 scientists and uh, kill one and a couple of Omax. And an uh, Earth-2 scientist named uh, Lana, who I don't know if she's an electrical engineer That's or what. That's what I'm thinking. I'm waiting until next issue where they're like, hey, I'm an electrical engineer. And I'm like, god damn, Lana Lang. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the are, like, only thing is like, she doesn't like being called a collaborator. So I'm yes. sure that will tie in with, you know, Earth-2 people who helped out Earth-1. I don't know. Yeah. Um, and she and she admits that oh yeah uh, those stealth omax you're looking for that we keep saying don't exist uh, they do exist there are stealth omax <laughs> they're everywhere they're everywhere <laughs> and there's one right behind you ah! <laughs> uh, checking in with Lois Lane she's dealing with her puzzle box and she makes mention that Clark Kent has disappeared does she open it and the Cenobites step out I don't know what that is uh, Hellraiser okay I do not know about that. But she mentions that Clark Kent has disappeared, so obviously the masked Superman is probably not him, as I'm sure we've assumed since probably the first time not. he showed up. But we, I actually, I can't remember who said it, and I will give you credit. I promise. Someone said, "What if it is a Bizarro?" Since we are five years later. Hmm. hmm. I would like that <laughs> quite a bit. So, and suddenly the little green pyramid from the box starts glowing, and it reveals. Earth 2 heroes being kidnapped by a bunch of Omax and Deathstroke. And uh, also the fact that Earth 2 Lois Lane is Red Tornado. And she kind of freaks out a little bit. A little bit. I'm a robot? What? (laughs) What's going on? So yeah, that's where we leave with Lois Lane uh, learning a lot more about Earth 2. 
She'll use her investigatory journalism to figure out more about that next week, I'm sure. About Earth 2 or about what she's supposed to be learning about? Uh, a little from Calme, a little from Gumby. Because she already flew to Cadmus Island and, just and went, completely missed well, it. Well, nothing here. I guess mm-hmm. I'll just keep going in the, what did you call it? The fast plane? <laughs> the fast plane, yes. <laughs> Ah, oh, that was a, that was a gem. I have to admit, <laughs> uh, I kind of was iffy on this one again. This is the third one in a row that I've been kind of iffy on. To, to... Yeah, I'm really waiting. Hopefully, with the uh, entire um, month of Future's End books that we're going to be getting, do you think they were just inching the ball forward to get to this month? I without wonder. Blowing their wad, so to speak. I wonder. I mean, so they could just been... be like. Okay, everything's set up, and oh god, we still got another two weeks to kill. Let's, let's, yeah, okay. it's like that. Those, those first few weeks were timed very well with things that were showing up in other books. Yes, that almost like disturbingly well. Yes, it was frightening. Um, the amount of planning that had to have gone into that. But um, yeah, we've been in a bit of a holding pattern. Yeah, not for, gonna lie. For at least the last two or three. So I'm. I mean, we're inching forward. Yeah. We're, not, we're not standing in place. We're inching forward. But it seems like they were just trying to. Hold off to September because that's yep. probably when a bunch of stuff is going to mm-hmm. hit all at once. No Frankenstein. Frankenstein. No Frankenstein. It seems like a lot of books just kind of hold, get in a holding pattern. Um, it's the event things, it seems. Yeah. Where everyone's trying to either line up with something or end something right before an event starts or make sure that they're at the place they need to be when an event starts. The and- entirety of world's finest. The entirety of World's <laughs> Finest, yes. Man, you were just throwing some haymakers in the last month or so. Each week, you take a swing at a book. I'm not being very nice anymore. <laughs> Sorry, man. I've been reading World's Finest for a year now. <laughs> and it uh, is so- not World's Finest. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully it will, it will lurch forward here next month. Uh, but that still gives us three issues to go, so maybe it'll lurch forward over the next three to ramp up into the last month. That's what Emiko I'm wants for. to start beating people up until she turns into the new Deathstroke, and I start hating her. I'll have no issues if, with that. If only we <laughs> could see Emiko in some place more often. I know. If only there was a book hmm. that she could be in. I know. If only. <laughs> if only. Uh, but that's it for this half. Maybe next half we'll find a, a home for her. Yes. Maybe. So, Brian, what do you have coming up for I round two? I got Batwing. I got Justice League 3000. I got Green Arrow. And I've got Trinity of Sin, Cole, and Phantom Stranger. <laughs> you have the last issue of Batwing and the last issue of Phantom Stranger. Okay. So, give them the due respect they deserve. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to wrap up the show with Batman Eternal number 18, Detective Comics number 34, who has a surprise return of a character that I did not know I was missing. And uh, Grayson number two. Oh, my God. I am so happy this book is out there. And I will wrap up the show with the Swamp Thing. So hold on a couple seconds. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we will shoot on through those books. I am- the bat half if anyone can't tell we're taking a little bit of a higher quicker pace today yep it's, it's late and things must be done mm. must be done so without any further ado batman eternal number 18 is where we're starting off this half like we do every other half for the last 18 weeks so uh lieutenant bard is out there making nice with all the citizens he's a good guy hey guys hey fellow citizen of gotham city how are you this fine day i am lieutenant bard why, yes, I am in the running to become the new commissioner. How nice of you to notice. Thank you very much. Ha <laughs> ha I'm so awesome. And Batman is being a creepy stalker. He's just following him all over the places and just watching what he does because he's waiting for him. He's going to make a mistake. He's shady. He did shady things in the past. Every move he takes? Every move he takes. Every breath he takes, even. Okay. Yeah. Every move he makes yes. by mistake. <laughs> 
And uh, he keeps watching him, and he seems like a perfectly nice guy. No, we already know what Red Robin thinks about Sting. So yes, we do. Uh, and that's when two disheveled, kind of homeless people, it looks like, go running through. Oh my God, help! Someone's injured. We have to get to safety, and they go jumping down into the sewers as Lieutenant Bar chases after them, going, "Hey, I'm a uh, GCPD. I can help. I can call an ambulance. You don't have to go through the sewers." Uh, People, where'd you go? <laughs> and Batman comes down and goes, hey, what happened? Why'd they jump down there? Uh, I don't know. One of them was bleeding. There was a little kid there with the guy. I, I don't know what was going on. Well, you better stay up here, Lieutenant Bard, because the Gotham Underground, it's a creepy place, let <laughs> me tell you. <laughs> there is some crazy stuff going on down there. You just wait here. And Batman hops down into the sewer, and Bard hops down right after him going, I'm... A lieutenant of the GCPD. I should be involved here. I need to get involved. I need to help out with this stuff. Okay, Lieutenant Bard, it's your funeral. Whatever. And they look around and they find the guy that was carrying the little kid is down there and his entire face has been bitten off. Ew. Just nom. Someone ate his face off. And Is that going to uh, ding? What's that? Is that going to ding? It's not a limb. It's not a limb, mm. but a face is kind of integral. Yeah. I'm going to give it one. Okay. <laughs> and, of course, Lieutenant Bart goes, I heard about this. There's crocodiles in the sewers here, and the, there's a king of them, and the killer, and he goes around and eats people. Oh, my goodness. And he's standing right behind me, isn't he? <laughs> yes, killer croc standing right behind you. <laughs> and they go, oh, my goodness, and starts attacking him. Uh, Bart's trying to get his gun to shoot him. And, of course, Brian, which killer croc do you think we get this time? Uh, one that likes to throw a rock at people? No, nope, no. Nope. Oh. Turn, 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 wheel of killer crocs. And this one we get is actually the same one we've gotten before. Uh, the king of the underground, he was, uh, in charge of all the homeless, the people that have been cast out, all of the okay, outcasts. That uh, he's very protective of his people. And he's so going, he's Whoa! the, he's the give me your tired, your poor, yes, you know. The, the king of the underground, so to speak. I still wonder what he did with that dragon. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's a pet he has down there. He has Maybe. a ghost dragon pet mm-hmm. down there. Uh, what ends up happening, though, is uh, he convinces them that he didn't do it. Batman tells Bart, he's like, obviously he didn't do it because look on the wall. And there's one of those handprints that we've been seeing all over the Arkham stuff with the creepy, creepy underground stuff where they keep chopping off people's limbs and making handprints with the severed arms. Yeah. So... Whoever did it, they went that way, and they go marching off through the ground. There's this really funny scene where Lieutenant Bart's trying to make small talk with Killer Croc. He's like, so, you're a crocodile, huh? How's that uh, working out for you? <laughs> it's, it's actually kind of cute. But as they're marching through the sewers, there's this weird little tentacle face monster, the like one of the ouds that's just down there going, chick, 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 watching them as they walk through the sewers. Spooky. Yeah. But we're going to go over to Blackgate Prison, a.k.a. Oz. Because it's prison gang war time, Brian. Kelly, have you watched that show yet? No. Man. Okay, pause the show for 14 hours, 24 hours, (laughs) however many episodes there are, because Kelly has to watch them all. We'll be right back. (laughs) No, it doesn't sound like my cup of tea. It's awesome. Uh, the gang war is going on. It's the Penguins gang has been arrested and put in Blackgate prison. The Falcone gang has been arrested and put in prison. And, of course, uh, Commissioner Gordon is there and is kind of being under protective custody because everyone wants to kill him. And it's kind of the the battle is starting. The Falcone gang is growing roses so that they can mark their kills because that's what Falcone does. He throws a little rose on top of the body after he kills it. So he's, the, you know, a fan of seal. Yes, he is. <laughs> uh, but we get our first casualty in the Oz gang war, Brian. And you're going to be sad about this. Oh. You're going to be really sad. Oh, man. Fishnet is the first oh. guy to go. <laughs> oh, man. Who would have thought a character from that run would be someone who would <laughs> die? It kind of seems like they're killing off everyone from Catwoman, doesn't it? Man. It really seems like ah. it's very targeted towards everyone that showed up at Catwoman is getting shamed. <laughs> man. You think no. uh, you think Rat Tail got arrested after his adventures? Oh man, I hope. What about all the other Rat Tails? Oh, you know what? If the Penguin Gang and the Falcone Gang has been arrested, do you think the Rat Tails run Gotham City right oh, now? Oh 
<laughs> it's their war cry of a woo everywhere you go. <laughs> <laughs> Look out, rat tails. We're coming for you. Uh, and the last it little solve vignette. a mystery or rewrite history. Or rewrite it. You never know. Uh, the last vignette. It's all we just get a them. rat blur. The last vignette we get them. <laughs> uh, in Brazil, Batgirl, Red Hood, and Batwoman have followed the clues that have taken them completely meta as they have followed the clues to a place where they have to raid their own action figure manufacturing <laughs> plant. <laughs> Where a bunch of child laborers have been enslaved to make little action figures of Batgirl and Batwoman and Red Hood and Batman. And they're all just gla- uh, glaring at them like stupid bat people making us slaves working on their stupid action figure. And the three Why are we neon funny, in this though? one? Why are we painting him neon? <laughs> I would like to know. Wouldn't the kids like another one of the villains maybe or some of the supporting guests? No, just Batman with neon him? Okay, sure. <laughs> That makes fiscal sense, doesn't it? Sure, let's just do that. <laughs> That's what it is. They that just won't have... disenfranchise anyone. <laughs> they have a crate full of sleds, and they're like, Arctic sledding, Batman. There you go. Push them together. <laughs> Get to work, kids. Uh, but they go in. They're going to split up. Ace the bat hound on a mountain board? Sure, why not? <laughs> The, the That's whole, an actual thing, by the way. That, that's kind of frightening, actually. The whole thing is that Red Hood is gloriously glib about everything. He is such a smart ass throughout this entire thing, much like he is in Red Hood and the Outlaws, where he's basically just like, okay, what's our game plan? And they're like, okay, well, I'm going to flank left, I'm going to flank right, and Red Hood's like, well, I'm just going to shoot everyone, because that's what I do. I'm Red Hood. I don't have to worry about your stupid rules. <laughs> and they finally go, okay, well, everyone's split off. Batgirl makes her way through, and as she gets in there, she ends up finding this guy who is playing with the action figures. He's wearing a Hawaiian shirt. He's got, like, this casual garb on. He kind of looks like Dr. Psycho. I don't know if that's who it's supposed to be. He's not short, though. He's just regular-sized guy. And all of a sudden, he puts a mind whammy on Batgirl and, uh, I guess, takes over her brain. While Red Hood goes to Batwoman and goes, hey, uh, we should probably watch out for Batgirl because she's in full-on rage mode. I know a little bit about rage mode being Red Hood. Serrated knives. Remember that? I was all over the place with them. We probably want to watch out because she's probably going to flip her lid at some point once this lead doesn't pan out or something like that. And that's when mind-controlled Batgirl jumps down on them and is like, oh, I'm going to beat you both up. And that's how it ends. I, I, I like this one, dude. I like this one a lot. <laughs> The the odd stuff is kind of my bread and butter. I love it. I asked for it. I'm getting it. It's exactly what I asked for, and I'm getting it just spoon fed right to me, and I cannot complain about that. And the the Batgirl Red Hood Batwoman team up is is glorious. Just glorious. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. That's Batman Eternal number eighteen. Brian, what do you got? I got Batwing number thirty four. It's so hard to say goodbye to Batwing. Um, all right, so Batwing, he's dealing with a bunch of gangs like cyberpunk Aryans and steampunk communists, and he gets super sad about how he doesn't make much of a difference. He gets rid of one, two more, come back. Oh, this is so futile. Uh, And then he goes, you know what? You know what will cheer me up? I'm going to go visit my mom and my vegetable sister. Because that it's really just will cheer you up. Guilt trip. Oh, and his so mom's hateful. just sitting there smoking a cigarette. I didn't know you smoke. I smoked before I had you. And you ruined our <laughs> lives. Luke Fox. <laughs> just pushing him away so badly. And then crying afterwards. It's just like, ah, oh, what are you doing that way? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, and then he starts to bond with his super genius little sister who now knows he's Batwing. They go to hear a lecture on exoplanets and sun eaters. Yes. Grant Morrison stuff uh, from Dr. Yeager at the planetarium. For all your complaints that they whitewashed Morrison stuff, man, I'm not yeah, seeing it. Yeah, it's... I'm not seeing it. Yeah, ever since we started, it just seems more like, let's just build the whole new 52 around this Morrison <laughs> stuff. A point from like one of the first episodes that has completely been proven wrong yep, yep. over the past next two years. You've completely blown out of the yeah, water on that one. I'm not complaining. Uh, so Dr. Oh, and drink. Oh, yes. Uh, Dr. Yeager is a genius, a hot genius, apparently, according to Luke Fox. So, uh, Tiffany's little sister introduces herself and embarrasses her brother by saying, Oh, yeah, he thinks you're hot. Woo! Super smart teacher. 
And uh, and then she uh, <laughs> Tiffany gets offered an internship because she is being so unbelievable, you know, like Huxtable Cosby kid, <laughs> super intelligent. Talking way beyond her years around Dr. Yeager, she's like, oh my gosh, I'm going to start paying you. You're way smarter than the rest of these college students I'm talking with all the time. After that monumentous occasion in her life, they uh, drive home. Luke Fox takes his eyes off the road for a second, and their car gets flipped over by an armored truck ramming into them. I do like how after, you know, being unbelievably smart and way out of her age range the entire issue as soon as she's upside down in her car seat tiffany just immediately starts crying like oh yeah she's still six years old yes she's yeah. six years old so they're both safe thanks to car seats um <laughs> but batwing tracks them down uh takes out the gang and saves a family that they had kidnapped in the process so batwing really does make a difference was it a five-point harness and a rear-facing? Uh, it was forward-facing, but it was a five-point harness. Okay. Yes. Well, I suppose, you know, she is six, so she Gotham would be Gotham City forward. laws are a little more lax when it comes yeah. to that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they got bigger problems. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, well, you know, if you can keep your kid alive, whatever you have to do, yeah. honestly, at this point. <laughs> it's Gotham City. Mm. Good luck out there. <laughs> um, I liked it as an issue. I didn't like it as an ending. No, it was not. They, a, they, they completely left that really interesting thing with like the demons in the warehouse and yeah. The, it, uh, it, oh god, what was his name? The beat up guy, uh, George. Yeah, gruesome George. Yes, yeah. the, the whole thing it it clearly caught them off guard. Mm-hmm. It clearly was not a planned ending. It seems it, it was kind of a well, we got the whole future's end month coming up, so why don't you just wrap it up before that? Yeah, yeah, why don't you just do that? Mm-hmm. And it, it's obvious. It's blatantly mm. obvious, but if this would have been a regular issue of Batwing, yeah, I would have been two thumbs up. This is awesome. Mm-hmm. Get in there again. This is t- finally going a, a good direction again. Not finally. It's always been going a good yeah. direction. It was just really dour there for yeah. a while. Yeah. <laughs> and we even get some of that in this, but there was kind of a, that rebound effect in this mm-hmm. one where it's like, oh, look, things are coming up again. They're going back up. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm sad to see Batwing go, though. Yeah, I mean, he's still tooling around Batman Eternal. And uh, Batwing, uh, Batman Incorporated, aren't they still out there? Theoretically. At the end of Talon, we know that uh, Night Runner and Dark Ranger, is that his name? It's not Night Ranger, because that's Sister Christian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which, if I started singing on Best in the Other Room, she would get very angry. Mm-hmm. So, we'll not do that. Um, but they're still out there. He can always sign on with them yeah, as well. Maybe Gruesome George will still be hanging out five years in the future. Ooh. Because they you know those who's 3D be covers they had to fig- they had to work their way up to that they ordered a month a year ago. You know who's going to be out there though? Who? Neo Russell. Oh yes. Neo Russell, his new <laughs> <and> arch nemesis. <laughs> so I, I, it was kind of a, and I'm not even talking about diversity. It was a different kind of Batman book, and I kind of liked it for what it was doing. Different from everything else in the Bat Family. It, it started to clone a little bit too much towards the end there, though. I think. Yeah. And it was obviously just a, well, let's try this and see if it works because nothing else is really getting the sales numbers we need to stay alive. Yeah. So you can't fault them, but the the beginning there was just great. It was mm-hmm. glorious again. Oh, I was Lion enjoying Mane. It. Lion Mane. Lion Mane. The, uh, Thank goodness Steve Trevor let us know who, what was happening with Lion Mane. Yep. He at least filled us in. Mm-hmm. So uh, Staying with the bat train, though, I got the Bucciolato and Manipool Detective Comics number 34. Yeah. Uh, it looks so great. It just looks so great. There's there's nothing more I can say about it. This is still a hardcore mystery detective book, though, so I'm going to take it a little bit higher level because there is so much clue deciphering and stuff going on in here. You really have to read it to get the, the feel of the mystery. I'm just not going to do it justice, so I'm just going to go top down on this one. Uh, Annie Aguila, remember the, the daughter of the lady that was killed? Yes, the girl who's not going to become a mass vigilante and or supervillain anytime soon. Well, things aren't looking too good for her. If you remember the the motorcycle gang, the Kings of the Sun, mm-hmm. brought in the brother of the squid and said, hey, this is the guy that killed your mom and handed her a gun and said, hey, do what you got to do. Do it. He killed your mom. He killed your mom. He killed your mom. And at the beginning of the issue, she pulls the trigger and kills the guy and then immediately regrets her actions. <laughs> Little dark start. A little mm. bit of a dark start. So we're going to go elsewhere. We'll come back to her at the end of this issue. 
Batman and Harvey Bullock were having a boxing match on who was the best detective. <laughs> yes. So you decide that's how that. you figure it mm-hmm. out. Uh, Batman broke his nose and they're standing there and the, the fight stopped because that giant energy being that they were pulling the Icarus drug out of crashed into the waterfront, destroying all the buildings there outside. And they're like, oh my goodness, uh, truce for now? Cause there's probably a lot of dead people over there. We both have work to do. And they're like, yeah, okay, truce. Let's get over there and figure out what's going on. Batman goes his own way. Bullock does his own. And Bullock is really pushing himself hard. Uh, Detective Yip, like one of his partners that's there. It's not his actual partner. She's just another one of the detectives there that's one of his friends. She's going, Bullock, man, you've got to simmer down. Your nose is broke. You're going crazy. There, We don't know what kind of radioactive material is out there because some glowing monster is there. You need to keep your distance. He's like, I can't. I have to prove that the GCPD is at least as competent of a detective as these masked people running around. I at least have to prove that much. So he's going out there to do his thing. Batman, meanwhile, has put together all the clues. There's so many clues on what's going on and figured out who actually killed Miss Aguila. And as he's going down to confront this little glowy monster... The motorcycle gang have shown up as well, the Kings of the Sun, and the, their leader, Holter, is there, and he's like, hey, buddy, how's it going? It's, this guy is like a kid, this glowing monster thing, like a teenager maybe at most. Something happened to him, we don't know. They've been keeping him alive, and because he, if he builds up energy too much, he explodes like he just did, and Holter's like, hey, man, we need to hook you back up to the machine so we can extract out all the energy. Sure, it makes an awesome drug, but you're not going to blow up neighborhoods. Uh, sound good, and the kid starts going crazy, and that's when Batman shows up in giant metal armor. Punchy, punch, 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 and the kid escapes while uh, he's dealing with the Kings of the Sun biker gang. He knocks out Holter, starts punching him. Turns out Holter is the one that actually killed the mother. He is Annie Aguila's father. As I said, there's so many things that happen here. I'm not yeah. going to try to go through it. Uh, he wasn't able to see his daughter because she was a up and coming businesswoman on the straight and narrow. He was a biker gang guy that was went through rehab once where she was at. They hooked up once and he was born because of it. And then he, she wouldn't let him see the daughter. So he had her killed. And Batman, of course, is very angry about this, and they're having their little punchy fight. When we get the reemergence of a character that I'm, I swear to God, it's just because Manifold and Bucciolato just like drawing him. And that is, we need to give the guy a name, honestly. The googly eyed squid that was <laughs> released from the t- aquarium and into the bay. I'm hoping it's the same one. Otherwise, we just have so many giant googly eyed squids in Gotham Harbor. Yeah. <laughs> Shows up. Knocks around the guy that sh- that killed the squid, this Holter guy, the leader of the bike gang, pulls him under the water, and Batman goes down to try to help him and gets knocked unconscious by a tentacle, and that's when Bullock shows up, pulls him out of the water, and goes, ah, gotcha now, it's a feather in the calf of Bullock, I get to arrest the Batman, and as he's turning around to flag down one of the other cars, he turns back and sees that his handcuffs that he had attached to his wrist, they're gone. He's like, I hate that guy, I hate him so much. <laughs> so... What do we want to name this giant googly-eyed squid? Because he is showing up way too often now. He is now a character of the DCU. Squidney. Squidney? Kelly, do you have a giant googly-eyed squid name that you want to throw out there? Uh, you kind of put me on the spot, so... Okay, that's fine. Uh, is Squidney okay with you? Squidney's fine. Okay, Squidney the googly-eyed squid is now a character in the DCU. I expect Ooh. if they release a who's who, he gets his own page. Mm. Because so far he has helped out the Justice League, Batman. Yeah. I mean, he's he's all over the and place. He can, he can go hang out with Topo. <laughs> he got thrown across the, over Norway as well yes. by Power Girl. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is goddamn googly eyed squid, man. He's it's DC's everywhere. answer to Wolverine. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he gets his own ongoing sometime. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the spectacular Squidney, or is that too too much? Maybe. Superior Squidney. The subpar Squidney. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so let's, let's wrap this one up. Annie has decided to go solo. She tells Batman as, as, well, she tells Bruce Wayne as she's leaving town. You're right. Gotham City is a crucible. It will, it will harden you and make you something. And I don't like what it's making me. I just stone cold killed a guy. I'm not going to tell you that, but I'm, I do not like what this city is doing to me. 
I'm out of here. And she jumps on her dirt bike and boom, drives off into the sunset. I'm going to go someplace nice and normal, like yeah. Bloodhaven. Like Bloodhaven. Nothing bad will happen <laughs> there. <laughs> and the, the issue ends, though, with Detective Bullock and Detective Yip checking out the crime scene, trying to find the rest of the drugs. And as they do, they find a crate with an anarchy symbol on it, which I'm assuming is a portent that anarchy is involved in this. The character anarchy Yes. Is out there and maybe Anarchy with a K because with I don't K. care about yeah. spelling. Yeah, I'm an anarchist. anarchist. <laughs> I was thinking, uh, you know, you meant, you know, 90s teenagers. 90s teenagers. They were all about the anarchy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Love them some anarchy. Not even just in the UK. They wanted it everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. It's kind of their whole thing. It really was. <laughs> so that's it. That's all my Batman stuff. Well, I guess I have Grayson as well, but yeah. I'm I'm pulling that away from the Batman. Mm-hmm. I'm saying that's separate. Okay. So what so, do you got? Uh, we're moving on from the 1990s to uh, the 3000s with Justice League 3000 number nine. So we've got the new Flash uh, 3000, who is Terry with an I, who gets sent after Terry with a Y, who is one of the members of the Who's five. a dance major? Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, the League deals with Locus. So Green Lantern uh, sends the League and oh, Ariel... locusts there? They're eating all the crops? Mm-hmm. So Green Lantern sends the League and Ariel through a teleporter and uh, fights Loco- uh, Locus himself. Uh, it's pretty awesome. He's still riding around in a pocket in his cloak. His he- Spectre-esque yes, Green he's got, Lantern. Like, yeah, there's like a Spectre Green Lantern-like construct and then the tiny little action figure-sized... Uh, I'm kind of hoping he Hal stays Jordan. action yeah. figure-sized Hal mm-hmm. Jordan. Yeah. Very amusing. Uh, so he takes out Locus and the Convert... Uh, Locus mostly because, uh, she's so distracted she doesn't realize that she can do whatever she wants. So he takes care of that. Uh, meanwhile, in the backup story, uh, the new Flash 3000 has some character building and confronts a brother. And has the, they enact the best plan ever to escape from the, the five. Okay, new Flash, just run really fast at him. <laughs> yep. Yep, yep, yep. Isn't that kind of his thing? Her thing in this case. Yes. Because oh. it's the sister of the Wonder Twins. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so she uh, gets the League transversal access and has a chance to kill uh, Terry, but she doesn't. Uh, Super Douche comes down, and she goes, Superman! He's like, God, I love when people say my name. <laughs> uh, comes in and saves her from Kali, who just sort of showed up and started punching her. Although there was that really awesome scene where she's running around and everyone's chasing her. She's running it like mock. 18,000, mm-hmm. and then Kali jumps on top of her and pins her to the ground. She's like, okay, well, I'm just going to wait here one second for the Speed Force backflow or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. What did she call it? The uh, the backwash? Yeah, the backwash. The Speed Force the speed backwash, and then everything that was caught in her wake, all the stuff, all the mailboxes yeah. and it's cars. Like a delay, just just like a delayed <laughs> suction reaction, just boom. <laughs> that was a great scene that where it's just great, her laying yeah. on the ground smiling like, ah, oh, you got like one second till the backwash hits you. Boosh. <laughs> Yeah, so she gets to go off, and she's like, I can't believe you saved me. He's like, well, of course, you're a member of the Justice League. She's like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe I get to be a member of the Justice League. <laughs> yeah, she's like, well, you're like a junior member. You're not a full-fledged Justice You could wash my socks, you know, but you're, you can hang out with us, you know, otherwise. And they make their escape, and we're going to have the final battle against the five next month. Yeah. Is it next month, or is it? I don't know. Did they get a... Does uh, Justice League 3000 need get a five-year... Because that would be really weird if yeah, there was a... Be. They're still not here yet. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Future's end, Justice League 3000. No. Uh, not alive yet. Yeah, yeah. so uh, enjoy, this, enjoy <laughs> these blank pages. <laughs> yep. So I'm assuming that's going to be a... They go on hiatus until October. Possibly. I would assume as such. Mm. They just don't fit into the motif of their event no. month there at all. Uh, there was one thing. What do you think of the Porter art? I like it. You like it? Oh, yeah, I've liked Howard Porter forever. Yeah. On CBR, there was the the thread for this particular book, and the first comment under it was, man, I, I kind of dig most of the Porter art, but his Wonder Woman looks like a bulldog <laughs> on her face. It looks like she has a bulldog for her face. And Howard Porter replied to it and said, hey, I like bulldogs. <laughs> <laughs> And and he's going to work harder to make it look more puggle next time. <laughs> okay, good, 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 good. It was just a very cute little thing that I noticed this week when I was flipping through notes and stuff like that. And I was like, you know what? That's a class act, honestly. Well done, Howard Porter. Yeah, just for getting out there and just being like, eh, you know, that's that's just one thing out there. So I'm glad you liked the rest of it. Mm-hmm. 
Dude drew a cover for a fanzine I was part of back in the day, just oh, yeah? because. Just like, because? Oh, yeah, you guys like the Justice League. You like my work. I'll draw a cover for you. We thought it was pretty cool. See, that's kind of badass. Yeah. I, I really... And it wasn't like just a throwaway thing either. It was the big, gigantic World War Three villain that like no one had seen yet and stuff. Wow. Yeah, it was pretty cool. I, I really like the way that the comics medium is because of that, where you can just... Like, I can jump on Twitter and just tell one of the creators, hey... That's a really good job. And most of the time they respond back and go, yeah, hey, thanks. I'm glad you like it. And it's yeah. like, that's just very weird to me. Yeah. <laughs> very strange. I, I, I like the, the small group because of it. it. It seems to work out very well as far as, uh, your voice being heard, I guess. Mm-hmm. For, then it feels a lot more, <laughs> it feels a lot more personal. You know? It does. It does. So, uh, let's move on. We kind of wandered off on an edge there. Yeah. Uh, Grayson number Two. Now, on the break, Brian, what did I say about Grayson number two? It was flipping awesome. It was flipping awesome. I am so happy that I decided to take this book because this is Batman Incorporated Volume 3. Straight <laughs> up. Straight up with the craziness. Straight up with the weird stuff that's going on out there. This is not spy versus spy. This is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so let's let's run through it. St. Hadrian's Finishing School for Girls, <laughs> a.k.a. Spiral Headquarters, the group that uh, Dick Grayson has infiltrated. They are out there having crossbow practice led by Helena Bertinelli just because of, of St. Hadrian's girl knows how to shoot a crossbow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's the weirdest finishing school ever. <laughs> And that is when a wounded hood, do you remember this guy? The guy, the Knight Templar Batman Incorporated yeah, guy? yeah. That ended up betraying them, kind of, maybe. Sort of. Almost. He shows up, wounded to all heck and back, missing a finger and three toes, and collapses onto the field from blood loss. He's all quippy and fun, and I love the guy because he just takes nothing seriously whatsoever. And they haul him back in. And Grayson, meanwhile, is checking in with Batman over his comms. He's like, hey, man, still out here, still alive, still doing the whole spy thinging. Going awesome. Uh, just wanted to check in. While Batman is fighting a motorcycle gang during this conversation called the Cycles of Violence. <laughs> <laughs> this is kind of your crime nouveau style yeah. thing in the background where I'm like, I want to hear more about the Cycles of Violence. <laughs> yeah. Come on, guys. Let him have a run. Maybe Cycles of Violence and Crime Nouveau can team up. Oh, man. Make a, make a whole big threat for him there. Uh, so this ends... They're having their conversation, blah, 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 blah. Elsewhere, Midnighter is absolutely consumed with his fight against Grayson. Because of this whole battle computer thing that they stuck in his head that he can be kind of a precog when it comes to fighting. Because it was a draw, because he didn't win, his stupid little battle computer just keeps replaying the fight over and over and over to try to figure out how he could have won. And it will consume him alive and drive him mad until he finally beats Grayson. He's like, ah, I hate this stupid battle computer. Okay, I got to go find this Grayson guy. But he doesn't know who he is because of the whole spiral implants. He just knows some spiral agent that's out there with black hair messed him up. So he has to go beat up all the spiral agents until he finds the one that was fighting him in the manner that he fought Dick Grayson as. Kind of sucks for him. That (laughs) does suck for him. Yeah, not only does he have to find a particular guy, he has to find a guy that's part of a covert operation of super spies that hide their identities entirely. So, not looking too good for Midnighter. No. Um, So, here's the crux of the issue. The Hood was out there chasing down another one of these mechanical implants that gives people superpowers. In this case, a mechanical stomach that was out there. A robot stomach. Okay. And apparently he found it, but whoever has it ate his finger and three of his toes, and he barely escaped and got away. They're like, wow, where was this at? That's a a weird thing. (laughs) It's a little weird. It's a little north of here. It's in England. It's in our backyard. Let's go up there and chase this thing down. We can't have this kind of stuff happening this close. They go up there, and the entire time it is Grayson practicing his English dialect. Were you aware there are different dialects of British? That there are different types of uh, uh, accents and, and and words that they use, Brian? Yes, they, they all yes. don't sound like uh, Dick Van Dyke. Apparently, what? I'm, I'm, I'm astounded at this. <laughs> you didn't know that? It was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> so he gets out and me. 
And the whole time, Helena Bertinelli's like, you're not taking this seriously at all. And he's like, I'm right dead sexy. Look at me. <laughs> they're like, whatever. And finally, as, as they're leaving to go split up and f- try to find leads, Dick Grayson goes, it's a sleepy little English hamlet. Really, how bad could it be? You turn the page and it's... Someone never <laughs> saw Hot Fuzz. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You literally turn the page, and it's Dick Grayson down in the sewers being pummeled to death by some super speed lady that's running around all over him. And it's like, okay, yeah, this is kind of bad. <laughs> this is really, really bad. And uh, Helena Bertinelli runs up, meets up with him, and goes, what's going on down here? Well, I met this lady at the bar who said she could lead me to it, and it turns out she's the one with the stomach, and it apparently gave her super speed powers. And this doctor... What stomachs Wait. do? How does stomach? How? Well, that's what we're gonna get. This Doctor Ashmore is the lady that has the stomach. She's like, yeah, it's this like super efficient robot stomach, and it's so efficient that it increases your metabolism and your body's reaction times and everything to ridiculous amounts. The problem is, I gotta eat a lot, and then all these other spy agencies start showing up. People like. The Blackhawks, like, uh, checkmate, like, they. <laughs> Have they shown up before? Not THUI? that I recall, no. Okay, well, then maybe new ones. They run down the entire list. She has all their uniforms lined up. She's like, they kept showing up, and I had to kill them because they were going to haul me off and experiment on me. But then I had to hide the bodies, so I ate the bodies. <laughs> And she has been a, a crazy cannibal lady ever since, eating people to maintain her metabolism while she's doing all of her tests on this robot stomach. Dick Grayson's like, okay. Ew. Cannibal people are where I draw the line. We're going to have to put her down, have her, you know, haul her in, sedate her, whatever we need to do to contain her. And Bertinelli's going, no, we're not here to contain her. We're here to offer her a job to work for Spiral. And Grayson is like, whoa, 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 whoa. I do not work with cannibals. I'm pretty sure I put that in my contract. No cannibals. No shirt, no shoes, no cannibals. Cannibal Bill's resume has been sitting in my inbox, and I refuse to answer it. <laughs> it was a very precise rule, no cannibals. Uh, I wonder if be- Cannibal Bill and Coroner Bill hang out with each other. Maybe they're the same person. <gasps> Ooh, all Mini <laughs> series. <laughs> this entire thing comes to a close. He's being very insolent. He's not allowing her to try to draft this Dr. Ashmore. And finally, she just says this trigger word, and Dick Grayson collapses to the ground. So apparently they have an implant in his head as well that will react to this trigger word to keep him in line. Is the trigger word tiny pants? (laughs) No, it is not (laughs) tiny pants. Pixie boots! Ah! (laughs) Uh, They haul everyone back. The Dr. Ashmore agrees to work for him. They they take out the robot stomach, put in a normal one, and her and Dr. uh, Nets are best of pals. Hey, yeah, we experiment on weird things all the time. You're a cannibal? I I could try it. Maybe on a Friday night sometime we'll go out and eat some people. Sure, whatever. (laughs) And the leader of Spiral is carrying off the robot stomach, and he says something about whose blood were you baptized in to get these powers. And all of a sudden, the computer runs a scan, and the flash pops up. Oh, I don't, I don't know <laughs> if that's uh, what that means, but to me, and I know this probably isn't the case, are they, are they building an Amazo? Hmm. Because we've had, like, uh, the last one was a heart that gave people, like, energy blasting powers, and then the stomach that gives people flash powers. That? I could see that. Is this like a components of Amazo being put back together or Who's something Amazo? like that? Who's Amazo? Amazo is a cyborg robot or full-on no, no, robot. No, just, just a full-on robot that has all the powers of the Justice League. He can absorb the powers of whoever he runs across or replicate them. Oh. Whoever is in the Justice League. Really? That's that's the caveat? That's specific, yes. Man, that's some poor programming on someone's part right the, there. <laughs> the, they once defeated Amazo because the Atom was the only Justice League member left who hadn't gotten beaten up, so he disbanded the Justice League and Amazo fell down. <laughs> that is some piss-poor programming for a robot <laughs> that is supposed to be a supervillain. <laughs> you wouldn't even have an if-then statement, if no Justice League, then kill everyone. <laughs> So then the, it could have the power of Lex Luthor, assuming that he's and in. Captain Cold. And Captain Cold. <laughs> assume- well, can he have the power of Captain Cold since he just has a freeze gun? I'm sure he could build his own freeze gun with I'm his sure robot he- parts. Uh, I guess so. Yeah. But that would be kind of lame if he's just stealing the tech off the guys. Did he throw batarangs? 
Did he shoot batarangs? No, he didn't. So, I mean, it's not like he's really taking powers at that point. Yeah. He's just making a gun. Still bad program. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but this whole thing is just basically, uh, as I said, it is Batman Incorporated Volume 3. The tone in it is amazing. It is so much fun. There's just weird stuff happening all over the place, and I absolutely adore it. By issue two, I am all in on this title <laughs> now. I love it. And I know because these are the same guys that wrote the the last couple issues of Talon, they're the guys that set up that Batman Incorporated are still out there, so mm. they can probably have a little bit of a maybe melding of groups there moving down the line. All right. Yay. Awesome. <laughs> all right. Moving on to Green Arrow number 34. So we're dealing with the gang war in Seattle. A gang war? Yep. It's La- in Gotham? No, no, no. It's in Seattle. Wait. We don't have gang wars in Seattle. Yes, we do. Are you sure? I'm sure. Is it like Little Seattle in Gotham City? Yes. Okay. Yes, there we go. Now I feel bad. <laughs> yeah. So uh, last issue left off with the enigmatic Mr. Diggle being defenestrated. You're really just going to call him the enigma- enigmatic Mr. Diggle every time now, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Okay. But he gets saved by a green arrow foam arrow. Yay, foam arrow! Uh, like a Nerf arrow? No, like he shoots the ground and then like safety... <laughs> and then, Yes, a Nerf arrow. Plonk <laughs> on the side of his head. It's so soft, he just bounces right off the ground. <laughs> Sorry, it's like you say foam arrow, and that's all I can think of are all the foam arrows all over the house. Mm-hmm. Yep. So you have failed this city. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh God, what's that picture Beth put on our Facebook? Oh, the uh, <laughs> the in order to honor my friends and yeah, it's, with it's, the Nerf bow it's, and arrow. It's, it's a Mel with the spirit Nerf arrow. Yeah. So Diggle and Ollie they get reunited and they team up to take down the new Richard Dragon. Uh, Emiko beats the ever loving crap out of Clock King. Killer Moth shows up to take her out, yeah, but gets darted to crap by Naomi, who uh. stole Red Dart's dart gauntlet. Dart, 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 dart. Uh, Vertigo just kind of leaves in the chaos that the gang war is creating, but at least he leaves a tail, trail of destruction as he goes. Yeah, so it, it makes really everybody cool. dizzy. Yes, yes. <laughs> cars are crashing into each other. Just the whole place just goes to crap. A lot of people sitting down. Mm-hmm. Oh, got the vapors. <laughs> oh, my goodness. My goodness. Are you sure this Mr. is Seattle? E, are you I, here? <laughs> are you sure this is Seattle? I tell you. Oh, my goodness. Why do I suddenly have the urge for biscuits? Um, dra- dra- I didn't know you were biscuits came into that one. <laughs> Southern style biscuits. <laughs> you eat them with your delicious fried chicken. Sure. Biscuits sure. and gravy, Brian. <laughs> Uh, Dragon beats the holy hell out of Ali, uh, doesn't pay attention to Diggle, and Ali is able to stick an arrow through his femoral artery. Oh, Ugh. that'll, that'll oh. do something. <laughs> mm-hmm. So for all of his, uh, very high-tech, fancy Batman getting trained in, uh... What do you think of all those panels of Richard Dragon just dismantling the both yeah, of them? Yeah, going full-on, you know, BBC Sherlock on every single aspect of these guys. Yes, these where guys. you just have, like, the little targeting reticles and little notes that are popping up, like, as Richard Dragon would see it. Mm-hmm. This is like, oh, well, I just have to poke him here. Poke! Okay, you're disabled. <laughs> yep. Yep, yep, yep. So, they beat Richard Dragon. Fifth gets taken to a hospital. Yay, Fifth, you're okay. <laughs> um... Naomi finally, I love this. Emiko is just sort of like, hey, Naomi, you know he uh, he loves you, right? And she's like, yeah. I hear tale that Felicity is going to be showing up soon, so I guess I'm going to have to settle for fifth. Yeah. And she just like puts her head down like Charlie Brown style. It's like, oh. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Why are you deserting me, Mr. Lemire? <laughs> I had a chance for a love triangle, and now I get fifth. <laughs> yeah. Um, Emiko. Uh, Dig- wait, Diggle's back on the team. Emiko is going to be Green Arrow's sidekick, whether he wants her to yeah. or not, so he's just going to have to deal with it. Uh, they could have gotten Vertigo, but Ali decided, you know what, last time I left Seattle, everything got really messed up, so I'm going <laughs> to stick around and help out Seattle for a while. And so, Green Arrow, he's the champion of the city. Uh, I'm sure, I believe this is when Lemire must be leaving. Yes, this the is book. the last issue for Lemire and Sorrentino. Yeah. Oh, man. Sad. Yeah. yeah. Sad. But, hey... It happens. But Felicity's coming on. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Probably. We don't we don't know this for Possibly. sure. Possibly. We're 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 just going on assumption here. So. Yes, because of the whole show writers coming over. Yes, we're exactly. assuming they're gonna bring over some more stuff. Yeah. Uh she wasn't Firestorm's dad a uh, mom yet, so 
Nope, not yet. The the absolutely wonderful part in this, the my favorite scene, was the part right after what was the Naomi where she takes down uh, your favorite guy, uh, uh, Killer Moth. Yeah. Killer Moth, and then she goes, "Okay, Emiko, you stay here. I'm going to get the van." And Emiko's like, a-, "A van? What are we going to do with the van? <laughs> Shut up, Emiko. Just sit there. You're eight years old. I'm tired of all your crap." And she's like, "I kind of like you. I'm going to yeah, stay here. You're cool now. Okay." <laughs> You're the first person to actually treat me like a kid. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> it was actually pretty cool. I, I really enjoyed this entire run. Uh, do you think it's going to go down as one of the better Green Arrow runs? Just in, Not even just New 52, just overall. It's certainly got a lot more going for it than some of the other ones. Yeah? I, yeah. I think just well, stylistically alone, it's going to stand out. From a style standpoint, definitely. Well, it turned yeah. Brian to liking Green Arrow. So. It did. It did a monumental task. And this is another one of the books that at the first issue, you were like, like, I hate this book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stupid X's for eyes, Magus. I hate you. <laughs> yep. I was going to say, heck, th- how many issues was it that, you know, it was uh, Boo Green Arrow? It was a lot, a lot mm-hmm. of episodes. Well, that was that was just a running joke. Yeah, it wasn't. It, it, was, it wasn't legit. And then, and then it was just, oh, I, I did, I did turn Green Arrow over to you. You gave me one issue. I'm like, yeah, you can take it for a while. But I gave it back. Yeah, I gave it back, I and, it, I, like and it. I turned, and I, I turned. So you know, I knew you were gonna. I knew it. Mm-hmm. I can read you. <laughs> mm-hmm. But we're gonna stay green because I have the swamp thing coming up next. Brother Jonah got stabbed, remember? Because mm-hmm. he thought that uh, the wolf and Lady Weeds are up there knocking boots, and Capuchin was like, this is really kind of creepy. Can you just tell him to stop? And he went upstairs, and it turned out the wolf was actually a giant blood monster and stabbed him through the stomach. Mm-hmm. So he was stuck bleeding out. Capuchin's response to this, her lover is dying, bleeding out. She runs out to the swamp, grabs the little plushy swamp thing that was kicking its feet in the pool, so that Swamp Thing could keep track of what was happening in the green, and shoves it in the face of Brother Jonah going, look at what you did, look at what you caused, because you brought those two idiots back here to the the material plane. And the little, adorably cute, plushy Swamp Thing all of a sudden grows into regular Swamp Thing, and he's like, oh my goodness, what happened here? Surely it couldn't have been me just leaving those two very evil people that I know were very evil just to hang out with you guys. Oh, it, w- it was that? Oh. oh. <laughs> Sorry. My bad. My bad. Turns out that uh, th- he's like, hey, Jonah, I can fly you to a hospital. I can have you there ASAP. Probably save your life. Probably. I don't, I'm not sure. And Jonah goes, no, I'm pretty much done for. Tell you what I want you to do, though. Go drop me into the pool. I'll go back into the green, and I will be the first member of your Parliament of Trees. I will be your Parliament from the green. So, do you think that's what Charles Soule is going to be doing here? Building the Parliament one by one so that they're actual characters and we know who they are? Because that would be really kind of badass if that's what he's planning on doing. That would be cool. I hope Bootsy Collins makes it. <laughs> Maybe Zillia Zox will become <gasps> He's like, I don't even know anything about plants, so why am I here? <laughs> I like those dandelions. They're nice and fluffy and round. It'll be a bunch of trees and just one shrub, a round shrub <laughs> in the middle of the parliament. It'll be awesome. It's Charles Soule. He can do it. He, he can could. Come over. He could. <laughs> and shrubs are kind of like trees. Kind of. They're plants. That's all we care about. I mean, they're like mini stunted trees. Yeah, baby trees. Uh, so anyway, Lady Weeds has injected that stuff into the wolf. His backup plan to make a monster to take on the Swamp Thing if needs be. And she has decided she's just going to go full on frontal attack. None of the scheming stuff that the wolf was doing. None of these behind the scenes manipulations. No shadow corporations abducting people. No. We're going to go to a hospital. We're going to murder everyone there, and Swamp Thing's going to show up, and then we're going to put him in a position where I get to take his body. I'll make you a parliament member, Mr. Wolf Guy. Everyone wins, right? Okay, let's do it. Go. And they go into the hospital. He's slaughtering everyone there, and Swamp Thing shows up after he, he hears all this stuff is going on, and he meets the new wolf, who is a giant raging cancer monster. He quite literally looks like a cancerous tumor with legs and a lot of teeth. 
Ew. Yes. Very, very disgusting. And he's murdering everyone and attacking everyone. And Swamp Thing's fighting him to a draw. And while that's going on, Lady Weed circles on back to the uh, the Bayou Mansion there. Picks up Sarov, the the guy that can swap bodies. Yeah, the, the actual member of the Serene. Yes, the actual only living member of the Serene. And hauls him off there. And it turns out that the wolf takes hostages. She's there with the Serene guy and says, Okay, Swamp Thing, come on out. We're going to swap bodies or I'm going to have the wolf here kill these people. He comes out and he's like, All right, fine. Whatever we got to do here. And uh, the wolf goes, I'm, I'm done with this. You know what? Screw you, Lady Weeds. You turn me into a giant cancer monster. I don't want to do it this way. I was having fun playing my games. I wanted to do it with all the scheming. That's I'm the wolf. That's what I do. I'm, I, I'm a wolfy-like person. And uh, he straight up lets the people go. No more hostages. And Lady Weeds goes, whoop, 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 and runs off because she doesn't have any more bargaining chips. And then the wolf murders himself, takes his own claws, plunges him through his own neck, and drops to the ground to die. It's like, I don't want to be a raging cancer monster. I'm just going to die now. I'm, I'm done. No more. Bye. Eh. Drops dead. Something was going to haul him off. Or he said, I can haul you off to the pool and make you a parliament member, but I'm not going to do that because you already threw away your chance to be a human, and I can't trust you to be a parliament member again. Weep wah. Lady Weeds, meanwhile, runs off, pretends she was one of the people in the hospital, and gets put into the back of an EMT ambulance. And uh, murders the guy, the driver, and she's going to make good on her escape when all of a sudden the doors rip open from behind. And it's Capuchin standing there. And Lady Weeds is like, no, 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 we can talk about this, right? We can just have a little conversation, you and me. And Capuchin is very, very angry. Says, so you don't like being in this helpless little human body? You used to be a, a raging swamp monster type thing. Well, let me show you what helpless is like. And she goes, hi and does a little karate chop right into Lady Weeds' neck and leaves her paralyzed sitting on the floor. Goes, now you're really helpless. Enjoy your life, Lady Weeds, and goes strutting off into the sunset. Capuchin, not very happy. Murder no. poet and all. And yeah. all. No. Pretty good at the the fitting punishments for everyone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but mm-hmm. the issue ends with Swamp Thing just kind of standing there with the serene guy going, well, that did not end well at all. I did not make very good judgment calls when it came to those two, did I? It's like, no, you really did. <laughs> and all of a sudden, this robot person, for lack of a better word, like this guy with a metal face, just a clear dome face, wearing a pinstripe suit, appears and goes, oh, but Swamp Thing, there is a better way. My name is Calculus. Bleep, blop, blorp. Bleep, blop, blorp. I never liked Calculus. Really? It's all theoretical. That's probably why I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all formula plugins. It's not that bad. I'm more of a geometry kind of person. Fair enough. Shapes like circles, like zillias. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so again, it's it's still great. Swamp Thing is probably one of the most underrated books that are out there right now. Yeah, is it's, it still doing? Is it doing well? It's doing okay. If they canceled their bottom five, Swamp Thing probably wouldn't be around. Yeah. Okay. But they just canceled their last bottom five, so everything's kind of moved up okay. a little bit. Oh, you oh. could do better. All it, right. It's probably doing better than a Swamp Thing title should, though, Okay, to be honest. To Good. be completely, frankly honest, Swamp yeah. Thing probably should not be ongoing. Where are we on, 34 right now? Yeah, yeah. That's kind of impressive in Very impressive, right. yeah. <laughs> So, uh, All right. I think Finish- you got one more? I'm finishing us off with Trinity of Sin, colon, Phantom Stranger, number 22. Whoop, whoop. Last issue. Yep. So, Phantom Stranger, he's trying to save Zoriel's life, and so he's ready to throw down with God. God's turned into a freaking tornado. Whoa. Yeah. It's time for a fight. A fight against a god, a fight for the ages, so you know what that means. What? Merry Christmas, Philip Stark. It's a wonderful <laughs> life. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Phantom Stranger is given a perfect world to live in. He turns it into his own personal hell. Or maybe my own personal hell. I don't know. As the, he has <laughs> theological debates with the entire cast of the book. I love my theological debates. Obviously um, you don't. Because you have been nothing but snarky about this title whenever it goes off on that direction. <laughs> uh, he comes back. He gives up his paradise to save Zoriel and work for God again. The evil angels come out and sing the song of the gods, which, as we all know, 
is Sailing by Christopher Cross. <laughs> is it? Are you sure it's not the other sailing? The canvas can do miracles. I'm sailing away. <laughs> 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 it's an open course. No, no, no. The, the next one, the, 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 the next one on the angelic chorus is Mr. Roboto. Thank you very much. <laughs> that was in Swamp Thing. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> so Zoriel is then reborn, hearing the wonderful <laughs> dulcet yacht rock tones of Christopher Cross. <laughs> he, and Zoriel is reborn as a bald lady angel. Because why not? Because. Someone else that can inexplicably fall in love with Phantom Stranger. Because. <laughs> Look at you all indeterminately aged with your white hair. Ooh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so all of our Phantom Stranger supporting cast, they'll go fly at the page in the last panel. And, Including uh, poor Dr. 13. Dude, who just can't, like, can't whatever. Fly, yeah. I, <laughs> I'm here. I'm Remember here. you guys? I guess they just crash in my pad now. I don't yeah. really bring much to the show. No. <laughs> My cousin apparently got a painting of her on the wall. Brian got really excited about that, and nothing came from it. <laughs> but you know she's there. I know she's there, yes. You know she survived the flashpoint. Mm-hmm, yeah. So that's all get, I can ask for. You got to take what you get I still take what I can get. <laughs> but that's it for Phantom Stranger, too. Yeah. You do know what, what's coming, though. Are we talking about... So we're not talking about a, the Future's End issue of Phantom Stranger. no. No, we are talking... Are the, we talking about Clarion the Witch Boy? No, Trinity okay. of Sin, no colon. Oh. They're, all three of them are getting dumped oh, into one All three of book. them, all yes. right. So we will have their continuing adventures of Pandora and Phantom Stranger. They're going to be re- really irritable without that colon. Without the colon. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, the colon's backed up. I mean, they, <laughs> they have it put away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they're consolidating. Yes, they're they're going to push them all together. Uh, it was pretty brazen to kind of split them off, I think. Yeah. It, 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 you know what? Try it. Yeah. It, it went longer. Than, what did they hit? 20-odd? 22. 22? Yeah. Oh, they didn't make your, uh, did not your make Demon my... Knights break wall. <laughs> <laughs> we did not get the Quincy sounder. <laughs> or is that Ironsides? No, that was Quincy. That was Quincy. I think it's Ironsides, actually. Oh, one of the two. No, whatever. My Kill Bill sounder. <laughs> yes. Um... But yeah, yeah, they're they're coming up for in October. They get their own stuff. That's where he's gonna go from here. And yep. Clary on the Witch Boy, of course, yes, is yes, out yes. There as well. I'm excited about that, as everyone is. It's not quite. It's not quite. I wanted her to write Justice League Dark, but Clary on the Witch Boy is a nice start. <laughs> uh, but that's it. That's all of our books for this week. We went rapid fire, so my apologies. We did not get to spend as much time on some of the stuff. Uh, Brian, what was your book for this week? If you have to say. Buy this one book. Um, I'm probably going to say Green Arrow. That's a, that's a pretty good one. Yeah. yeah. That's also a walk-on, too, I think, that you can you can get the gist of what's going on and still enjoy it without mm-hmm. having read anything prior. Mine's Grayson. Hands yeah. down, Grayson. Sounds like it. Yeah. Love it. Just love it. I don't know. It's, it's all that batman stuff that just makes me so happy. Yes. So, so very happy. But make sure you guys do go out there and buy these books. Uh, it, anything that you want to support, feel free to. It's it's great. It's a good time. As I said, we usually go pretty high level, and this week especially so. So if you really want to get the full gist of what happened in the book, you, you do need to sit down and read it. So make sure you support the hobby. Next week, we do have a couple books, though. I don't think it's as bad as this week. So there's only two books? Awesome. Not quite two, but eh, not 15 either. So we have Justice League United number four, the New 52 Future Zen number 15, New Suicide Squad number two, as Beth is glaring at me from the doorway, (laughs) Uh, Constantine number 17, World's Finest number 26, Superboy number 34 with so many Superboys on the cover. So many of them. Uh, Batman Eternal number 19, Batman 34, Batgirl 34, Harley Quinn number 9, Birds of Prey 34, Green Lantern Corps 34. Man, that's hard to say. Green Lantern Corps 34. Hmm. I guess it's not that bad. And Superman Wonder Woman number 11, continuing the Doom Train. So There's a couple ones that we like out there. Like Suicide Squad. Yeah. How much you guys love that one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I can't believe I'm the only person that even likes that book. You guys suck. <laughs> Superboy, and and I'm loving that. It's your Aaron yeah. Cooter fan page. Yeah, I know. Jumping right? yeah. for joy on that one. Mm-hmm. And World's oh. Finest is the holding pattern. <laughs> yeah, I think World's Finest is switching over here soon. 
I don't know if they get this week, this month, but pretty soon it's switching over to Earth 2 Superman Batman. So Okay. I don't know, but not yet. Uh, but that is it. Guys, if you do want to contact us, though, you can do so at the following channels, the internet. Or you can use mail. If if you can find our address, you can um, smoke signals. Yeah. Uh, carrier pigeons. Telegraphs. Yeah. Um, Singing all telegrams. Uh, candy grams. <laughs> that would actually be awesome, candy grams. Mm-hmm. Unless it was a land shark. Well. <laughs> then I'd be pretty mad. Unless it was the beer land shark, then I'd be happy again. <laughs> Uh, but we are DCR Podcast everywhere. If you want to email us, we're feedback at dcrpodcast.com. You guys know how the internet works. Just get out there and type it in. You can find it. Mm-hmm. Uh, anything before we take off, guys? Oh, I, I put out I put out a call for a blood pool party illustrations. I did see that. I mm-hmm. was just going to mention that. Uh, you have your first of many, I assume. Oh, yes. And that was, that's, that was low key, just drawn with some crayon markers with my kid. I've got so many plans now. And it would also appear that there is a wacky races design contest yes, that's going is, on there as is well. A, we are on the Facebook page. We are also uh, scheming out some uh, DCU wacky races cars. Yes. So if you have an idea for a a DC villain and what their wacky races car would look like. Feel free to th- feel free to throw it up on the Facebook page. There's a, apparently going to be a contest starting here soon. <laughs> Why are we so weird? Honestly, <laughs> why are we so weird? I don't get it. It's 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 not even like contests that mean anything. It's just us amusing ourselves. Yeah, and that's that's all it is. So, um, Guardians of the Galaxy. It was it was okay. Oh yeah, it was okay. Yeah, it was okay. It was fun. Don't get me wrong. I thought it was a lot of fun. It does start to show some of the chinks in Marvel's writing, though, I think. Really? Yeah. The villain monologues interrupt villain with blast from good guy. Seems to be getting a lot of play recently. The let's get drunk and then give our backstory while we're drunkenly ranting. Getting a little bit of play. <laughs> I'm not saying it's bad at all. I had a lot of fun. I enjoyed it like no end. I just noticed a couple little things. I don't know if that was their go-to or just a, it's comfortable and these are very weird characters, so let's keep it comfortable for the weird characters so that people aren't Man, Sean, I guess Sean out. just doesn't like fun. I hate fun. I tell That's you. what everyone knows about me. Sean hates fun. Mm-hmm. Hates I it. Say- I just said I liked it. I had fun. I, say, I, I think I liked it almost better than Avengers. I'm saying from a critical standpoint, taking a step back and looking at it, there was some repetition of previous things that they have done before. Boo. Almost <laughs> formulaic. Almost formulaic, I'm Boo. just saying. <laughs> so, now that you guys are glaring at me. <laughs> um, I'm not glaring at you. <laughs> uh, guys, enjoy your books, enjoy your weeks, enjoy your lives. Because we're going to come back at you next week. So have fun and talk to you then.